Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter with my review of the Sony a7C, road tested after three years of continuous use and travel. The Sony a7C has been my primary camera for the last three years, and this video is a little bit bittersweet because it's the last video I'll be shooting with this camera. I knew when I got the a7C there was one feature one feature that would get me to upgrade, and the Sony a7C II has that feature. But I think if it weren't for that one thing, if it weren't for that one thing, I probably wouldn't be retiring this camera. The a7C is the first line of compact full-frame DSLRs from Sony, and it's something of a controversial camera. It's basically a trimmed down a7 III, but a lot of people were disappointed that it lacked more custom function buttons and doesn't have dual card slots. Not me though, I think the a7C is a nearly perfect travel DSLR, full frame DSLR, and it's held up remarkably well. So let's start with the body. This A7C has been to over 30 countries, hundreds of cities, and been in hot, cold, damp, you name the climate, this camera has experienced it. But you wouldn't be able to tell by the body, which barely has any signs of wear. The hard body of the plastic has no scratches, dings, or dents, and aside from the thumb grip here, which has this ever so slightly glossy wear, the handle is in good shape. One complaint about the handle is that it's small, and yes, it is small. You do get used to holding this camera after a while, but if you've got bigger hands, it's even a less comfortable fit. I personally never hold the camera without a peak design wrist strap around my arm, and with the a7C, I feel even less comfortable without one as a safety precaution against gravity. The shoe on top also looks good, even though every time I use this camera, I'm basically putting on or taking off a microphone, and aside from the plastic around the viewfinder, which does have a couple of scratches, the a7C is a solidly built piece of tech. When traveling with the a7C, I keep it in a mega gear sleeve and that inside of a Swiss toiletry kit when I've got my larger backpack with me. Despite being taken in and out of airport security trays and precariously perched on Joby tripods, the buttons are all still clicky and firm, just like the screen. I do have a screen protective cover on the touchscreen, but honestly, the screen hinge is where I thought I would see the most wear and tear. I'm the kind of person who flips my screen back and forth each time I pack my camera, and since I'm often filming myself, have it flipped out pointing at me, and then flip it back when I'm packing it up or shooting other things. But despite all of this, the hinge is still firm, clicky, and there are no dead pixels in the screen. Same goes for the dials, and as an added bonus, the white labeling and lettering all around the camera, that hasn't even worn off noticeably. The only place where you can see some appreciable wear is on the bottom plate and that's where there's some slight discoloration from twisting on and off the mount from a Joby tripod. But aside from that, there's really not much else that really gives away how old this camera actually is. Based on all of that, you can probably see why I wouldn't want to change the a7C if it weren't for that one feature. It's held up remarkably well and I might be playing with fire here, but I haven't missed the dual card slots and had no issues so far with SD cards going bad. I know it's possible, it can happen, but in my experience, I haven't encountered that. And it's something that happens so rarely, or at least has happened so rarely, knock on wood, but it's happened so rarely at this point. I'm happy to have the compactness of this camera rather than the dual card slots. So I prefer, or I have a preference for this camera being smaller than things like dual card slots. And if you have a preference for compactness as well, I think you're gonna be happy with that trade-off. There is no front dial, but when filming, I only ever really need to make aperture adjustments on the fly, so I made do with the back dial. The door placement for the USB-C port to stream, charge, or transfer files is in a nice location at the bottom, not in the way of dangling strap anchors, unlike the newer A7C II. I'm still using the same Sony battery, plus a few more off-brand ones, but the original battery still gets me easily 2 hours and 10 minutes of shooting in 4K while powering a Sony microphone at the same time. It's also worth mentioning I haven't really gotten any overheating shutdowns except a couple of times, maybe in southern Pakistan in the middle of summer, but even in tropical places like Guyana or Honduras, overheating has never hindered my ability to film. And that's the reason I like the A7C so much is that it's very reliable and it allows me to focus on what I want to do, why I got this camera, and that is to film. To film travel and tech videos without having to worry about the camera, and once I got the settings all dialed in, it's really been pretty much set from there. And I know this camera so well that I can change settings just by reaching it over here like this. And honestly, it's only been recently that I feel like I've been able to optimize the a7C to get the look I want. But despite how much I like the a7C, there are just a few things that I would like to change about this camera. One gripe is the orientation of the flip screen. 
There's often this awkward angle where the image is upside down when I want to film something up high or low and view it at an angle. A function button to flip the screen would be great. The menu as well, it's the older Sony menu system and it's fine, but it's not as quick to jump around in since you've got to hop up vertically and move through menu categories. It's something that probably won't bother you too much unless you're used to the newer Sony menus, which are just a lot easier to navigate. And lastly, there's the one feature, the one feature that I really wanted in the Sony a7C, the one feature that's causing me or getting me to upgrade, and that is 4K crop. I mainly shoot videos with the Sony a7C. I've got a 17 to 28 millimeter Tamron lens on here. So I usually need a wider angle when I'm shooting travel or tech. It's rare that I really, really have to zoom in too far into something. So I'm usually zoomed out and I like having this wide angle. But the Sony a7C has a crop, a 1.2 times crop when you're shooting in 4K at 30 frames per second, which is the correct frame rate, by the way. So it crops in just a little bit, which means I can't take full advantage of this lens. I can't take full advantage of the sensor. Let me show you. Let me show you what this lens is capable of when you get the full angle that it's capable of versus what you're seeing now. All right, so now I've switched this camera to 1080p in 30 FPS. So you can see how wide I can get. So I could zoom in and then it's not as wide. And if I zoom out, now you can see just how much this camera is capable of capturing and what I'm missing when I'm shooting in 4K 30, which isn't a huge difference. It's not a huge deal to everybody, but it's an important feature for me. So when the Sony a7C II was announced, it's the first feature I looked for. Does that camera crop in 4K 30 FPS? And it doesn't. And when I saw that, it sealed the deal for me to upgrade this camera. Still, I really like the Sony a7C. One of the reasons I do road tested reviews is because how past products hold up is usually a good indicator of how a company will make future products in a similar line. And if the Sony a7C is any indication, then my Sony a7C II should last for years to come. And if you're shopping for a compact DSLR and you're not worried about that 4K 30 FPS 1.2 times crop, maybe that's not a huge deal to you. Maybe the lack of a dual card slot is not a big deal for you. Maybe that there's no front dial on the camera there is not a big deal for you then the Sony a7C just might be the right camera for you. That's my road tested review of the Sony a7C. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you're shopping for this camera or use this camera. I'm curious to hear what your experience has been like. And if that 30 FPS crop at 4K, is that important to you or is that just something that I really am focused on? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I will see you in the next video.